started out on, at a farm in Bergenstein, PA, the original show. We originally had five acres that were donated to one of the original members. This show we have a little bit of everything. We have stuff for uh, the women, we have stuff for the children, and we have a lot of food booths. Uh, it's a great place, a lot of shade for people to get out of the sun, a lot of benches to sit on. We're kind of proud of this showgrounds. Uh, like I said, it's our 40th year, and it keeps growing every year. We get people from actually all over the world. We've had them from Sweden, England, uh, a lot of people from Canada. Uh, it's just, we're well known around the world as far as the construction equipment. But that's not all we have. I mean, uh, we have a sawmill, we have rock crushers, we have farm tractors, we have thrashing, baling, sawmill that uh, works all the time. It's just, a great show and it's a nice family oriented show. My name is Bill Kolesar. Um, I'm from Avella, Pennsylvania. This is my happy place, running the shovel. Um, I started running it in 2010, uh, painted it in 2012. Um, it's a Lima shovel and Lima 34 Paymaster. It's got a three-quarter yard bucket on it. Uh, it's about mid-40s vintage. Um, it, uh, it's, it was used probably in a little bit of coal loading and that sort of thing came out of Lima, Ohio, out of Lima Locomotive Works. And the National Pike Steam Gas and Horse Association is like a working museum. Uh, it shows the progression, progression of the uh, construction equipment at that time, all the way back to the steam era. And then as you watch these machines work, like I said, a working museum, uh, you can see how the technology has progressed. Uh, I tell a lot of people that may not have known about this place, I said it's like a big sandbox with big toys. And I think we're one of the few that you can actually watch the machines work and understand. Uh, occasionally I like to get people up there, show them the mechanics of the machine, how all the machinery works, and basically how the machines work. And it started out on, at a farm in Bergenstein, PA, the original show. And that went on for many years, and then it moved to a fairgrounds, and then it moved to a, a private owner's place and then it broke up and uh, it was for, this place was formed. And uh, we originally had five acres that were donated to one of the original members who lives right down over the hill here. And it's just grown every year. Uh, we're now up to, I think it's like 110 acres uh, that we own. Uh, some of it we can't utilize. It gets pretty steep because you're up on top of a pretty steep hill here. And a lot of people don't even know the showgrounds is here, uh, but they, and they live close by. But once they find out, you know, they just can't believe it's been here for 40 years and they didn't know about it. But. OK, 
Okay, we just finished the pass on this antiquated shaper. What this machine does, this tool traverses across this material, taking slight cuts. What it does, it's gonna plane it flat. It can take any shape that you can hold in it. This happens to be square. It works fine for that, okay? But what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this out. We're gonna set it up with the next part we're gonna cut. So, first thing we'll do, we'll want another device. And it has to be fairly tight because we're cutting metal. Take that out, we're gonna inspect that finish. We like that finish, that's, that's acceptable. We're gonna call that a good part. Oh, look at this one, it's got some mangled up stuff on it. Maybe we'll make that flat again. The rigor old file. We'll push that file. You got a little shiny spot coming up, tells you it's cutting. You only push the file in one direction. Four only cuts forward. Don't put on back it up. Push it forward. As you'll see that getting bigger. That means it's getting flatter. Okay, blend it all the way across the top. That means we're flat enough to go back in the vise. Okay, we're gonna clean this off with this brush. We gotta watch because these are sharp. These will cut you to ribbons. Then we'll go ahead and we'll put that block of aluminum in there. Then we're gonna bring the vise up tight on it. Okay, we're gonna snug that vise a little bit. That one's because that might about bounce up out of there. We're gonna we're gonna pin it down with a hammer. When it's flat, it makes a different noise, so you know you're seated. So we'll take this feed handle and we'll unwind this. You have to get this tool up out of the way. So we're gonna bring it up. Now we're gonna bring this over so that tool's over top of it. Now here comes the danger part. The only way to get this thing to traverse forward to get a touch on that tool is to physically grab this belt. You pull this forward. Then we'll wind this down. We're gonna wind it down till we get a touch. We got a touch there, we're gonna back it up a little bit. Then we're gonna back this off the part. Now we're gonna have to get noisy, we're gonna turn it back on. Okay, get everything safe out of the way. Fire up, we're gonna go live. Okay, this way we're gonna turn this thing on. We're gonna switch the belt to drive. That machine's gonna start to stroke. Let go of that handle. Stay out of that belt. It's gonna tear you up. Now we'll bring this in. Okay, we got a touch. We'll give it a little bit of feed down feed. Okay, I like that chip. We're gonna work with that. Okay, now what this is gonna do, it's gonna continue to cut across here and it's gonna continue to feed until it gets to the other side. When it makes it to the other side, we're gonna shut it off. If it's flat enough, we'll leave it alone. If it's not, we're gonna put it in another cut and do it again. If we had to hold a size, we'd have to take it out of there and measure it to see if it's thick enough. Then there'll be a set of graduations on here that we can adjust it and tell it how much more it needs to be cut. My name's Mark Coon. Um, the big yellow rock truck, which they call Big and Ugly, I drove it for Sam Lansbury, that's who donated the truck. Um, I've been coming out about four years. I like the engine show, the equipment down here, the people. Uh, you get to get close to the equipment. I learned about this show probably in 87, 88. I always saw a sign up in Greensburg. Big Ugly is roughly somewhere, we're guessing, between the 50s and 60s. We don't know for sure. Uh, R.S. Carlin strippings and snowshoe had it to start with. It may have came off of Interstate 80 when he built that road, but he had a strip job. He ran it for a long time, and then Claire McGovern is the guy that bought it off of him, and then he kind of shut the job down, and then Sam Lansbury bought the stuff to backfill this strip cut up by the truck stop in Clearfield, Pennsylvania. As you can see, it's a good-sized truck. I hauled uh, rock and dirt in it for Sam Lansbury. 
We backfilled a strip job up in Clearfield, Pennsylvania, saw some TA truck stops, and Hunter Peterbilt has a big new dealership in there right now. And the other guy, he ran it, and Sam Lansbury needed a driver. Tommy Lazy was the guy that was running it, and I stopped in to look at the truck, and he said, hey, you want a job? And I said, well, I guess why not? So he called Sam, Sam came in, they hired me right on the spot, so I ran it from there on until the job was done. And then there was a guy from Brownsville. Now it was a gas steam horse show, or association, came up there, wanted to go for a ride in it, and he said, I want to get this truck and take it back to the museum in Pittsburgh. And that's how it all started. Sam donated the truck to him. They moved it down here, and it's here, so, and it's up and running. A shame, think something new under the sun. Mm. You can't take back some things you already done, done. No. Uh, my name is David Vincenti Sr. I've been the member here for 41 years. Uh, a blacksmith for close to 38 years here, but now my health won't let me uh, sit back here and pound the iron like the other guys are doing. So well, I have a quite a collection of antique tools, uh, hand tools, pedal power tools, all the stuff on that side. I'd like to demonstrate some of these tools to you. Now, this tool here is a cone cutter. And what it does, it forms a point on the piece of wood. And this has to be used first before we use what we call a tenon cutter. I'll walk over here and demonstrate it. Okay, you noticed now I have a point on a piece of wood. Now the text, next tool we'll be using we call the tenon cutter. Now that'll make the round thing like I've shown you right here. I'll demonstrate that right now for you. Okay, finished with that one. Now what we have we call a tenon. Now this will fit in the, in the chair rung. You'll, you'll have to drill a hole, this fits inside of it. That's what these two do here. The other tool I have is called a, uh, well, let me see, right here. This is called a uh, uh, size sharpener, Austrian size. You had the Austrian size, side blades. So what you did, you drove this into a stump, you lay your blade across, and draw it out. This over here, it's called a shaving horse. I made this about 40 years ago. I made all my own handles for my blacksmith tools. And what you do, you put it in, you step on it. All that does is hold the wood. You can shave it, shape it any way you want. Hi, my name is Jim Alderson, uh, blacksmith here at the Steam Show. Uh, what we're taking is an old pitchfork, repurposing it into uh, tail feathers for a bird sculpture that a gentleman here is working on. Uh, first step is going to be get this in the fire and get it up to temperature where we can bend and it makes the, the steel malleable. This fire will actually get hot enough to, to completely burn and ruin the steel if unattended. Uh, as we burn the coal down, it uh, reduces all the impurities in it, smokes off and turns into coke, which is a hotter, cleaner burning fuel, uh, which also is used in steel production. Here, I'll come here. Is that good there? This one here needs to kink over a little bit. Yep. Which way are you going? This way? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Hold up. Let me see this. I'm just going to, yeah. One of the previous uh, forks we've modified for a uh, sculpture that'll be used, uh, amongst other things we make here, uh, any type of forged work, a horse head that was made here, all the way down to the hammers we use are made. My name's John Lebkicker. I've been a woodworker all my life, ever since I was a small child. Then I got into making the models. The little boy in me had to make me, wanted me to do something different, and then I got into this, and what I do is now, I take pictures and measurements off of the real machines and scale everything down. I don't make blueprints per se, but I work off of my sketches and the, the pictures that I have. My machines that I work on, and I, I have sometimes 150 to 200 hours just in the layout work or whatever of taking pictures and, so, and measuring them before I ever get a chance to start cutting wood. And then after that, you just, you find a major piece. I always try to find a major piece, which I know my measurements are good on. And I make that first, that piece, and I use that as a yardstick to keep all my measurements in uh, in fold or whatever with, with, the, with the overall of the project. I started out building the 116 scale models. Uh, the first time, I, the first ones I bought, I bought scale, or I bought uh, plans out of a magazine to get a little bit of a knowledge of how to go about what I wanted to do. And then I played with the idea for a year or two and then one day I was bragging about my ability and a guy says, I want to make, I want you to make me a 325 cat, uh, excavator. And I said, can do. And uh, about five months later, we had one made and one thing has led to another from there. My name is Jerry Miller. Uh, I've been doing this thrashing and baling since I was about 15. Uh, I don't know how many years I've been down here at National Pike. It's probably 10. So uh, right now they're baling behind us. It's uh, spelt straw. It's a type of uh, small grain. We actually grow it on the showgrounds and we cut it around 4th of July and, uh, with, a, with a grain binder and shock it. And then about a week or two later, we load it onto the wagons and bring it in and run it through the thrashing machine. It's a uh, Frick Thrasher. Uh, I'm not sure of the year, so, but, uh, and then uh, it takes, that's what separates the grain from the straw. And then uh, they'll, uh, the, they run the baler behind it, which is a stationary baler. It's, uh, you know, there's a man feeding it, and then there's two guys pushing the wire ties through the block to make the bale. been featured in many magazines uh, for the construction end of it and uh, and that's basically my I mean I'm I like everything old I mean we have a lot of farm tractors and gasoline engines uh, but my love I operated equipment most of my life we have a farm uh, and I just it's a family thing for me I mean I have 
two sons and uh, I think a total of nine or ten grandsons and great-grandsons and they're all part of it. They all help, they all want to do stuff and that makes it great for me because I have a legacy when I'm past why well, I know all the equipment that I have is gonna it's not gonna get sold or scrapped it's gonna stay in the family. If we don't promote this, the, it's just like history. It will, uh, it will just disappear, and the uh, wisdom and knowledge will be gone with it. And uh, but it's just a great place. So your family can come up. If you bring your family, wear your playground clothes. But uh, yeah, it's it's just a great place to be, and you know, come and see us. Everybody can find like this. Everybody to